it right there. Hi, uh, my husband and I came from Canada. We drove over 22 hours to get here. Uh, the rationale for us making the trip was because we were having issues with our dog, Jax. Um, we had tried several different trainers in Canada from a, a behavioral consultant that we've been with for over six months to um, just really uh, regular trainers that a lot of people would, would know of that I won't mention their names. Um, as well as we traveled to Michigan to see a trainer as well and, and just didn't have any success with other trainers. Uh, we had an opportunity to uh, stalk Richard online <laughs> and follow him and watch a lot of his videos and so we thought that he was, well we, we came here assuming that he was our last resort with, with Jax and the training has been sensational. From day one, Jax reacted as we had assumed he would. He is uh, a bit anxious around people, but he went after Richard immediately. And that same day, Richard was able to help us understand what Jax was thinking um, and the psychology of what he was thinking, and then help us understand how we could appropriately discipline him so that he can help correct himself and get better on his own. But the training with Richard is really a perfect balance of positive reinforcement as well as uh, pressure so that Jax understands when he's doing something good, he's going to get rewarded for that through the positive reinforcement. And when he's doing something that is not appropriate, he understands that it's not acceptable and there's a, a, dis a discipline associated with it. So it's been a great experience. We're very happy we came. We're leaving very on a very positive note and uh, we've got the tools we need to continue this when we get back home. And uh, hopefully uh, Jax will continue to be a very happy camper because he's been very happy since he's been here and we expect that to continue when we get home. So we are very thankful to Richard and uh, very happy that we made the trip. We, were, we would not let people approach him. If people came in with a couple of feet of him, we were very careful. We would pull him off to the side. Um, there was limited situations where we would let people try to pet him, uh, if ever. Uh, and that was mostly limited to people that he knew. We were even paranoid with our family members. So not the two of us, but my parents we were paranoid with. Uh, my husband's uh, father we were paranoid with. He's got a dog walker that he's been with since he was, a, since he was young and uh, we were paranoid with the dog walker. So we just, he was unpredictable. He was like Jekyll and Hyde. Really sweet and affectionate and then he would just turn and, and act crazy. Right, right, stay right there. Facts could not be around anything that was fast moving. So people walking quickly, people running, skateboards, bikes. Kids were like a big no-no. Um, complete 360 in regards to uh, his behavior around those things that used to drive him crazy. So y yesterday we had an opportunity to walk him through a crowd of people where there was a bike, there was a skateboard, there were kids running around. He came like two inches away from a kid and he did not react. And that would just not have happened historically. We would have been in a lot of trouble if we tried to walk through a crowd like that historically. And he would have been like doing his stalking her. It would have been the Cujo just, effect. Not just stalking you guys. And after you got that done, I'm bringing everybody I can. Okay. And if you feel safe, you feel. No 
something too. Yeah, anything. Jogger. Full blast, crazy. Full blast, crazy. Yeah, but like ultimate crazy. Yes, <laughs> like ultimate crazy. <laughs> yeah, there's little temper tantrums that aren't that little. They're like uh, an act of. I'm. I think something's wrong with this dog, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure if there's something mentally wrong or what's happened to him. But yes, full blown crazy. Now, yeah. The veterinarian was telling you he should be put to sleep. The vet told us that he's likely not fixable. And he's only one, he just turned one recently, and the advice they gave us was they said that as he gets older, by the time he gets turns two or three, um, he'll be at full maturity and that aggression will just become that much stronger and that much forceful. And uh, we should consider our options now as opposed to continuing to try to fix them. Especially since at home we had gone through uh, four different trainers and, and had not seen success. And in some cases, some of the training that we went through had set us further back as opposed to putting us forward. His demeanor when you got here. All the... Yeah, he was... Anxious and stuff. Yeah. And then over days now you can see... Calm, yeah. His face, his body, and all that. Yeah. When we first... Yeah, when we first got here, the first, like, as soon as we got out of the car and we came anywhere near Richard or anywhere, he was crying, he was panting, he was licking his lips, he was doing stress yawns, he couldn't sit still, he was stalking, he was his, his I, I called him crazy eyes, he had his crazy eyes, um, or evil devil eyes, <laughs> he had his crazy evil devil eyes, and now he, I, I don't have him on leash. Um, there are people that are running, walking, biking, like feet away from me, and he is just sitting here doing absolutely nothing except for being very calm and relaxed, which would just not have happened historically. You never think about that least. No, no I, I, frankly, <laughs> even <laughs> I might have asked like three times, should I put him back on the leash? Do you think I should put him back on the leash? <laughs> because of the anxiety that I had from prior experiences with him built up to this particular point. But he's been sensational, and there's fitness equipment beside us as well and that would have just driven him crazy before because people are um, on ellipticals and doing various things that he just would not have tolerated before. That would never happen, right? No, he would, be he would go after Roy or, or the machine or... Yeah, yeah he would definitely probably start off with the machine. And then if he wasn't getting anywhere with the machine, then he'd start to bug away. Yeah. Now if you want to, so have Roy that side, you that side, and you just hold him. Yeah, he's looking at her. He's yawning. <laughs> he's like, is it nap time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Now, if you want, let's switch to this one. Because yeah, that's okay. legs on the bottom. bike and machine. Yeah. <laughs> now that would have been a definite, right? Like the skateboard, like attack, like a... Yeah.
find that, I mean, from an e-collar training perspective, it's been very gentle. Like he has not, nothing that we've experienced has been anything that's been torture to him. It's been very, um, very gentle and very just corrective. It's helping him understand how to deal with his own nerves because he was so wound up before and we see that change. Regardless of being here and in training sessions or even going back home to the place that we've rented and, and stayed. The first day we got here, he sat outside and every noise he twitched and moved and, and couldn't relax at all. Now when he's in the backyard, the neighbor was pressure washing the windows and he would have lost his mind before and he slept through it. So. It's a massive difference for us. We see a big difference. Totally yeah. Most people think you touch an e collar, you're going to make it more anxious. Like, mm. That's everybody's thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when we tell them it's pacifier to calm him down and relax, they go, that's impossible. Yeah, no, but it's true. It's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. We've noticed a difference. And uh, yeah, for him, it's been a huge difference. Again, you can just see it in his demeanor right now versus when we first got here. Yeah. There he goes. Yeah. <laughs> He's out. <laughs> so, you want to say anything to anybody? Like, yeah, I mean, Roy, you can comment as well. But for us, we would not hesitate, without a doubt, uh, encouraging anybody to work with Richard. Uh, it has been a very positive experience for us. Again, this was our last our last option we didn't know what we were going to do and we came here saying okay if this doesn't work what what What's what are we going to do yeah because we were fearful of leaving him around anybody so if we went to work during the day needed somebody to come and let him out and both of us work long hours and both of us travel for work so we need alternatives to just the two of us being around jacks and we we've been managing for months now with uh, trying to schedule travel so that if one, one of us is traveling for work, the other one is able to be at home with him, which has been really challenging for both of us. And uh, yeah, that's not going to be the case any longer. So for us, this was, uh, it's life changing for us, for sure. And we fully, uh, fully encourage it and would fully recommend it and are very thankful to Richard and will continue to be thankful to Richard. And Jax will too. <laughs> Like, listen, I actually love the guy. Yeah, now he does. Uh, you know, day one, like Richard's voice would get him like, oh, what, why oh, is this no. guy, yeah, why is this guy talking to me? Now he is, uh, just doesn't care. He's just like, whatever, there I'm good. There yeah. he is. Yeah. Guy who comes to, the to be honest, he's excited. Yeah, we get out of the car and he's wiggling his bum and he's excited to come over and see Richard. Give it a break.
and and other people too there was somebody that wanted to say hi to him yesterday and he did not react he was just like okay you want to say hi that's fine you come and say hi and we wouldn't have been comfortable with that previously so <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I would say that Richard's method works and Jax is a totally new dog, totally new dog. Uh, Jax is what we wanted. Uh, we want to be comfortable. We want to be at ease. Uh, we don't want the headaches anymore and looking over his shoulder. Um, Richard's method really works.